Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, my third video on Euler's Criterion. And so uh, if I keep my promise, then we're going to prove it in this video. And we're going to do just that. And Euler's Criterion, by the way, uh, front and center right here. Uh, now, uh, recall that the Legendre symbol A over P uh, being equal to 1 means that A is a quadratic residue mod P, uh, which in turn means that this congruence equation has A solution. And then a over p being equal to negative 1 means that a is a quadratic non-residue mod p. And so uh, this congruence equation has no solution. Yeah? All right. So uh, both of those are very important to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, naturally, our proof is going to uh, go into two cases, when a over p is 1 and then when a over p is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to make two separate videos, um, case 1 here and in a video to follow, case 2. So let's start with case one. Um, case one is uh, when, um, as we said, a over p is equal to one. That is, a is a quadratic residue mod p. Well, in this case, we said that uh, this congruence equation has a solution. And let's call that solution x sub zero. Then it means that x sub zero squared has to be congruent to a uh, mod p, right? Um, all right. And if we so choose, uh, we can rewrite this as follows, which is a is congruent to x sub 0 squared uh, mod p, right? And by the way, instead of mod p, we can write this, which is going to save me some writing, so I'm going to do that from here on out. So every time I write this, I mean mod p, yeah? Okay, cool. All right, now next, uh, what we're going to do is take a and raise it to the power of um, p minus 1 over 2. And we note that this is uh, the same thing as taking x sub 0 squared and raising it to the power of uh, p minus 1 over 2. Um, and then uh, we look at this here and see that uh, using exponent rules, we can write it a little bit better uh, or a little simplified as follows, which is we can write it as x sub 0 to the power and the power will be um, this times that. So 2 times p minus 1 over 2 is just going to be p minus 1. And as soon as I see this, I think a little and remember a little something called Fermat's little theorem, which should tell us that x sub 0 to the power p minus 1 is congruent to and has to be congruent to 1 mod, you guessed it, 1 mod p. Yeah? Okay, cool. How convenient. Uh, and again, uh, we know uh, this last part by Fermat's little theorem. But then now it means that this here is congruent to 1 mod p. So I'll have a to the power of um, p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to um, 1 mod p. Oh, and I said I'm not going to write mod, right? So I'll just write um, that. Yeah? Nice. Uh, but then we said 1 here, uh, which is the same as that 1 there, is equal to a over p in this case. So what we can do is uh, say a to the power of p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to um, a over p uh, mod p, right? Uh -huh. But then by the same interchange that allowed me to go from here to here, right, I can go backwards. So what I can do here is rewrite this very last step as um, a over p is um, congruent to um, a to the power um, p minus 1 divided by 2 mod p. And there it is, yeah? This completes case 1 and part 1. So uh, case 2, which is part 2 to come. Uh, that's when a over p is uh, negative 1, yeah? Okay, cool. So case 2 here, where we have a over p um, being equal to negative 1, meaning that uh, a is a quadratic non-residue mod p. And remember, uh, this here means that this uh, congruence equation has no solution. Very important to keep that in mind because it will come into play shortly, yeah? Uh, this implies that this has no solution, yeah? Okay, cool, cool. Now to start, let m be uh, one of the numbers in this list here, yeah? Okay, um, now uh, first notice that this list has all the possible numbers mod p except for zero, which is p itself but all the possible numbers mod p are in this list, yeah? Okay, cool. Now, next, look at uh, the congruence equation. mx is congruent to uh, a uh, mod p, right? Uh, now, uh, my first few number theory videos are dedicated to solving congruence equations of this type, 
Uh, so check out those videos. Uh, one of them is called the one solution case. Another is called the no solution case. And a third is called the uh, many solution case. And what we have here turns out to be the one solution case. And that's because GCD of uh, M and P is equal to one. So what we have here is the one solution case. So one solution case. And um, let's say that this one solution is called N, right? So let's call it N. All right, so then first, uh, it means that M times N uh, is uh, congruent to A mod P. And I'll abbreviate for mod P by just writing that, which I'm allowed to do a lot of books abbreviate in this fashion. Um, all right, so first we see this. And then next, uh, we know that M cannot equal N. Uh, we know that M cannot equal N, and this is why. Uh, so let me add that M cannot equal N. And the reason why we know that is because uh, suppose M is allowed to equal N. Now N solves this equation, so we know that uh, MN is congruent to uh, A mod P. But then since M is allowed to equal N, we'll have either N squared is congruent to A mod P, or we'll have, uh, if, if it's not this, we'll have M squared is congruent to uh, A mod P, right? And neither is allowed, because we said that this means that this has no solution, right? So for this reason, M cannot equal N. Okay, okay, and this has consequences. And what, what consequences, you ask? Well, remember, I said all the possible numbers mod P are in this list. So where is N gonna come from? It's in this list. So N must also be in this list, right? All right. Uh, and then notice that uh, M was this M here and th that M therefore was arbitrarily chosen from this list. If, if I wanna make it more specific, I can write a subscript on it and be like, it's some specific M called M1. So then I can uh, say that the corresponding solution N is called N1. And then I'll have M1 times N1 uh, be congruent to A mod P and M1 not equal to N1. Uh, and then I could distinguish uh, another M from M1 by writing M2. And uh, I'll just write a two there, a two there, and then a two there, and a two there, and a two there, and a two there, right? And that's it. And I can continue in this manner. Um, so you see, I'll have uh, pairs of MN and let's call them M, I, N, I, M1, N1, M2, N2, uh, that multiply and are congruent to A mod P, right? And uh, I have um, that I has to be bigger than or equal to one, but less than P minus one over two. And why you ask? Because we have P minus one total numbers starting from one all the way through P minus one. M takes one of them, N takes another. So uh, the possible pairs of M, I, N, I are P minus one over two in amount, right? So I have M1 um, times N1 uh, multiplying to, or uh, being congruent to A mod P, and then I'll have M2, N2 uh, multiplying to be congruent to A mod P, and then the last one I'll be able to write if I continue in this fashion uh, the last one I'll be able, able to write is going to be M sub uh, P minus one over two, N sub P minus one over two, um, and they're gonna multiply uh, to be congruent to A mod P, right? Cool, 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 cool. So what I'm gonna do next, so keep this in mind, what I'm gonna do next is gonna seem really random, but it's not, uh, and it's what we need to finish, and we're almost at the uh, finish line, yeah? And what we're gonna do next is this. Uh, next, we're gonna start with one and then multiply all of the numbers in this set right here uh, from which we picked M and N. So we're gonna take one and multiply it to two and then to three and then to four all the way through to uh, P minus one. But wait, this is by definition equal to P minus one factorial. And then by Wilson's theorem, we know that uh, P minus one factorial is congruent to uh, negative one mod P. So we know that P minus one factorial is congruent to negative one mod P. And we know this again from Wilson's theorem. 
Yeah, okay, cool. But then look at this, the product of uh, the numbers one, two, three, four, all the way to P minus one is the same as taking M1, N1, and then multiplying it to M2, N2, um, and then multiplying uh, M3, N3, all the way to uh, M, uh, P minus one over two, and P minus one over two. Because we said M is some number in this list, and N is some number in this list, and uh, we pair them up, and uh, the pair of them up to this pair accounts for every number in this list. And so multiplying every number in this list uh, amounts to multiplying all the M's and all the N's together, right? Uh -huh. But then look at this. This will have to be congruent to what? Well, these two multiply to A, so we'll have A times, these two multiply to A, so we'll have A times a for everyone in between and then finally these two multiply to a also so we'll have a here uh, mod p right but wait uh, this here is uh, p minus 1 over 2 eighths so what we have is that this product here is on the one hand congruent to negative 1 mod p but it's on the other hand congruent to a to the power of p minus 1 over 2 mod p uh, from which we gather that um, a to the power uh, p minus 1 over 2 uh, has to be congruent to negative 1 uh, mod p uh, so uh, I guess I could just abbreviate for mod p like that I've worked hard enough right <laughs> all right and then um, uh, this guy is true which is negative 1 is equal to a over p in this case so we have a to the power p minus 1 over 2 uh, is congruent to um, a over p uh, mod p. And, um, and then, uh, and I'll actually write it out, mod p. And then if we so chose, we can rewrite this as the following, which is a over p um, is congruent to uh, a to the power p minus 1 over 2 mod p. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So this completes part 2 or uh, the proof of case two, and that's it. Um, you won't believe how many times I re-recorded this to make sure that like I delivered it as well as hopefully you found I delivered it, um, which is like really well, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I re-recorded this video like so many times. Um, but yeah, um, uh, hopefully it shows and uh, you appreciate it. Take care, bye.